Hello everyone, welcome back to Parker's FNAF School. Hello Parker. Hello. Did you just salute? Yeah, I did. Fair enough. Uh, so if you didn't see the last and I guess first episode of this series, I will link it up there. Uh, and it's where we watch the first half of uh, Matt Pat's Game Theory Ultimate Timeline FNAF video episode one. How many times can you say FNAF we got in one sentence? Nine, just uh, just under ten minutes in. Um, which means we've just got just over ten minutes left of the first episode. Uh, so so far we've learned about the the sort of background to William Afton as a person and where the inspiration for his first. Freddy Fazbear thing came from, and then Henry Emily and his little deal with Chica and how they combined to make Fazbear's Pizza die in a place. Um, and that's where we got up to. Mm -hmm. That's that's what you missed on FNAF. <laughs> There's a reference. Business was good. What Afton is up with Chica's eyes? Mostly. It did bother him that the one original sure. character that he created, the one that he himself played, Golden Bonnie, got passed over for inclusion oh. in that cartoon show. The only character in the roster of regulars to get ignored for the show, but other than that, things were going smooth. He had himself a wife, two sons, a daughter. He had a thriving business. And best of all, he was able to learn the craft of robotics from the man that he both loved and hated, Henry. Together, they were constantly pushing the limits of what these characters could do. Because it was quick and easy, new characters introduced into the roster would be given a simple hand-sewn suit with five fingers that any performer could wear. Eventually, Henry would design one of his signature animatronics for that character, utilizing a divided mouth with either a hinged or sliding jaw design. This was the first generation of animatronics. But why stop it? They right, had been generations. Ideas. See, this is like my Muppets. The because you talk about the different different types of puppets. I do indeed. I know about the different types of animatronics because okay. of these videos. Ah. And I know about like Disney and France because of Disney Dan. Wait, second shout out in a row from Disney Dan. We love you, Disney Dan. Come on the podcast, please, Disney Dan. I love you, Disney Dan. I love you, Matt Pat. Come on the channel, Matt Pat, so I can talk to you, Matt Pat. It's my channel. <laughs> well, I'm going to be here. What if the what was it? I loved you in Escape the Night. Stage, but could freely roam the restaurant I loved you in Random Encounters Musical. What if musicals? these suits could become animatronics? What if you could use more than just rigid metallic skeletons? Might not experiment with tubes and wires that would give the animatronics fluidity and flexibility while still providing structure. The possibilities for this technology were endless. Afton fell in love with robotics. He had started with a dream of bringing one simple singing bear to life, but with robots, he had stumbled across the tools that gave him the ability to control life itself. And thanks to Henry, he was practically speedrunning his way to an engineering degree. And while William wouldn't admit it out loud, one other thing that kept pushing him forward was the desire to beat his former rival. To prove himself smarter and more capable. <laughs> to surpass the man who everyone else considered to be a visionary genius. But pride cometh before the fall, and tragedy was about to strike. Okay, so that brings us to the end of part one of the story. That said, at the end of each of these chunks, I want to break down some of the logical leaps that I made mm. since I didn't the know more he narrative format part doesn't give me too. much of a chance to justify a lot of the big decisions. Whoops. And admittedly, there are some large leaps in here. Let's just start off with Fred. I mean, at least now we know we can wait for him to say that's the end part the retro one. poster that was hidden in Security Breach that at least at one point, Fred Bear was an actual bear. And like I called out in that narrative segment, dancing bear shows were a real form of entertainment. The only problem is that timing-wise, none of our main characters would be the people in charge of that business in the 30s and a series of pizza restaurants in the 80s without them just being extremely old. Best case scenario, if Afton's running the singing show when he's 18, that still puts him at nearly 70 when the first pizzeria opens and his murder spree begins. It just doesn't make a lot of logical sense because he doesn't become immortal until his first death in Springtrap. That's why I suspect that Fred Bear's singing show was either a family business that Afton then mm -hmm. carried on to a new generation or something that he saw as a kid and just wanted to recreate when he grew up. The Fred Bear singing show thing also starts laying the groundwork for some of the core elements of the story, that Freddy's was a place of fantasy and fun and that Afton, despite eventually falling to become the heartless serial killer and mad scientist that we know him as, began as someone with good intentions and a love of entertaining kids. He wanted to bring things to see. life from the very beginning, a theme that recurs a lot for him throughout the rest of the franchise. Next up, let's talk about those mascots. I really don't What's like this love Bonnie. I love him. No, I like and Bonnie, but that Bonnie's horrible. No, this one's everything. great. It even has five fingers for the performer's hands. It is very much not a spring trap suit. This is something 
much more rudimentary. It came at a time before animatronics were a part of the story. That's why I suspect that it was actually the first, predating literally everything. It's also a suit that is very personal to Afton. He put his digital consciousness in that form. It's his personal avatar. It's the way that he sees himself. There's also a whole separate discussion to be had here about the habits and rituals of serial killers. So the fact that he's choosing to lure kids and kill them oh, at this that is horrific. What says, game is that from? This is the VR one. Oh, I'm not playing that. That's well, fucking horrible. I'm, oh, I'm not buying a VR set. No, you can do it just on the PC. No, that's horrible. No, we're playing this one. Look at the way it's shitting waves. You should see the way so it dances. The fact that he's choosing to lure kids and kill them. Oh, I don't need that. It's fine. No, it's all right. <laughs> Sorry. I'll show you. Hang on. It's horrific. So the fact that he's choosing to lure kids and kill them. And can I show you his little dancey dance? No, you. Do you know what it reminds me of? What? You know, in Sims Wave. Oh. What am I typing in? Or do you not want to do it on different tabs so we don't use this? What am I typing in? Um, glitch trap dance. This is. I don't want to see this, do I? It's great. Oh no 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 <laughs> no! Oh no! It, go down. So go to that one. Yeah. So this is the ending of the VR game. You're a child in this bit. Or presented as, you're probably not a child. No, that's horrible. But you're presented as a child. You gotta follow him. Take, take the cake and follow him. <laughs> he can fuck himself. <laughs> Are you okay? You're, you're right. I'm just eating pizza. <laughs> Don't blame me. Stress eating. I understand. Like, can we can we hurry up, my guy? Ladies and gentlemen. Boys oh yeah. And girls, so you've just been killed SBI and put in a suit. Entertainment would like you to put your hands together for the one, the only, the only, 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 only. So you're Freddy. You've just been killed. And there he is, doing, the, doing a little happy dance. You'll see him. He'll come across the light in a bit. But he's really happy because he's just killed you. Bless you. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Oh, you need to see the other ending as well. No. Hang on. No, you do need to sit there. Uh, no. No. No, please. No, it's scary. No, 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 because this one's even better. But it's scary. Uh, Why am I doing this? There is a way to kill it. And uh, monsters I don't care. To escape through. Hi, Maji. Hi, Maji. There he is. He's just chilling. Oh, I don't like him. Uh, where, where are you in the box? Here we go. It's horrific. So, look, people have been trapped in here before. You can see them, they try to get out. Oh, sorry. Again, I don't need that. <laughs> Sit still, damn it. <laughs> people have tried to get out before. I can see. Oh, I just don't like him at all. Boop. <laughs> now you're trapped in the VR headset forever while he goes and possesses your body. I just don't, I'm just not a fan, to be honest. We're not doing Let's that. go back to the... Uh, not doing that one, I'm afraid. Not doing the VR one. You fuck yourself. This particular suit actually says a lot about his emotional attachment to it. So, while Fredbear seems to have started as someone else's creation, Golden Bonnie was uniquely Williams, giving him a personal connection. And that's not all. In this whole franchise, only one set of characters have themselves five fingers. The Nightmares. Even Golden Freddy, Fredbear was a five-fingered wearable suit at one point in the story, as we see in this shot from the graphic novel. Before, That's he, like cute. everyone else, was turned into an animatronic. This seems to imply that all of the main characters had similar wearable mascot outfits at least at one point in time. And that whoever is having the FNAF 4 nightmares, if they even are... Now, I'm going to be very clever or very stupid here. Mm -hmm. In FNAF 2, you can put the head on, can't you? So is that an old mascot head of Freddy? Uh, probably, yeah. Because obviously you can put that it on in the, and the animatronics go, you know what? It's it's heavily that's implied Friday. that that's one of the mascot costumes because so it's fucking clever. It came before 
the chicken or the egg. What order did the games go in chronologically? Chronolo oh god. Um that's Sorry. a very good question. So it's two not after one? No, two comes before one. Right. Um But the this is where it gets complicated. Complicated. The um, so the FNAF one animatronics are in FNAF true two. True. True. Two, but withered and more right. decayed. But they came before FNAF two, which came before My head FNAF hurts. one. It's very. I told you. He told you. Complicated. Part two. Saw those mascot suits specifically. Lastly, we have to talk about the elephant in the room. The literal elephant, Orville Elephant, as well as hmm. the rest of the mediocre melodies. For a while now, I've suspected. <laughs> oh my god! You can get them to play for mediocre best, The mediocre melodies. That's great. Look at them. I love the hippo so much. The hippo's Played you. a much more important role in the story than just being a bunch more animatronics to fill out the roster. Especially Ned Bear, which is just so suspiciously close to Fred Bear. And yet, there are two key details that we're going to have to justify with any mediocre melodies mention. One, they're very rudimentary with external battery packs, implying that they come very early in the timeline. And two, we know that, at minimum, Mr. Hippo does eventually become an official member of the extended Freddyverse. But if yes. these things are supposed to be cheap, generic ripoffs, why would you of the Fred verse of what? madness. You would be stealing someone else. Think a stroke. So if Afton created Fred Bear, there would have to be some rival franchise. The right. only other person who would like to be ripping <gasps> Not off. Not Henry. 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 We've talked oh extensively God, about how the media melodies are clearly Henry's design aesthetic. So it just has to be him. I don't think Henry's doing this maliciously. He doesn't strike me as the type. He was likely building the robots at the orders of someone else that was running a rival restaurant franchise. But that's enough motivation to start. So going off that monopoly of yes. rivalry but also begrudging admiration. As the Freddy Files Ultimate Edition says, it's important to revisit the, the beginning Freddy of Files. Henry and William's relationship. So here you go. I think this is where it begins. Also, this is future Matt Pat here coming back to add this one in. Seems like the recently released character encyclopedia has oh. backed up all of this speculation. I've had this timeline written for about a month now, but I've also been holding off a bit to see what wrenches this character encyclopedia might throw into it. And on this particular point, I gotta say, it seems like we might actually have nailed it. They actively call out the suspicious similarities to the main Freddy Fredbear crew, quote from one of the pages. Nedbear looks pack. like an imitation, altered just enough to avoid copyright issues. I don't know about <laughs> me you, when reaction that we were right on the money. Knowing all of this, at one point, <laughs> this the video. franchise has had People think I put that nice background behind all my reaction videos now because it looks aesthetic. I don't. It just avoids copyright. That's not me being, wow, that looks cool. That's me yeah. going, if it takes up less than 50% of the thing, they can't really copyright you strike for it. Wait. But it looks cool, doesn't it? It's really the only way that you get Mr. But Hippo from the rival franchise as part of the Fazbear crew. This also mirrors a lot of what happened in the real life history of Chuck E. Cheese, with two rival restaurants, each with their own casts of characters, oh. merging to become one unified brand. Again, we've gone into that in detail with other videos, just wanted to remind you all of that here. But why would I call out the rival restaurant as being named Chica's Party World? Few things, actually. First, we know for a fact that a location named Chica's Party World exists. It is mentioned in the source code teasing Shut system. So it is out there somewhere and doesn't fit cleanly anywhere. Second, in the story of the puppet carver, Chica is very explicitly looped in with the book versions of Pig Patch and hmm. Ned Bear, implying that she started as a mediocre melody. Thirdly, her design just fits better with a the theme of down home country animals with southern accents playing the banjo and eating with bibs. And with her being the headliner of the show with her name on the restaurant, it would make sense then that when the restaurants merged, she was the one that was added to the main cast of characters while all the other mediocres faded away. It's also why when Freddy's closes after William's killing spree, that, she's the one who goes back really off into her old franchise Context, and is me and my good uh, friend James, the new Skinner, who's on this channel. If, if you're here just from the FNAF, you won't know him. If you're here because you like the channel, you'll obviously know him. Um, he's been in a whole host of videos, Shrek reactions as being the main one, tier lists, movie reactions, all sorts. Um, and we have a, uh, a podcast channel, but also now not just a podcast, uh, called Mediocre at Best. So the fact there's a mediocre gang, whatever they're called. Mediocre melodies. It's quite amusing to me. In sister location, a detail that's bothered me for years at this point. It might also explain why William decided to stuff his first dead kid into Chica. That one was Henry's creation, not his. Is all of this a big leap? Yeah. Is it connecting a lot of dots that are very spread out across the franchise that I've been I don't know why in the back of my mind for years? Absolutely. But I think it makes sense. It also serves as a clean answer to a lot of the random threads Dr. that Scott's been dangling for years. <laughs> 
So, with all of that in mind, my friends, we can close the book on the Foundation of Freddy's. And don't worry, next week I'll be back to give you arguably one of the most confusing parts oh, of the great. entire timeline. Because this was very Part tangible. two, the Afton era. I promise it will actually be next week this time. No more waiting around. I am just as eager to get this one out the door as you are to watch it. I promise. You know what else I promise? I promise that we'll actually get to talking about the games. I would have liked to have talked about them in this episode, but there just isn't that much in the games that helps us depict anything pre-Family Diner. Although, let's be honest, this franchise has never been just about the games anyway. Even back in the early God. days of FNAF, we were decoding images and source code that Scott fed us through the website. The modern oh, day the talks good old days. that we get from those things, now they're just modern images. brightened images and watched videos backwards. This franchise and its lore. Oh. Unless, of course, Steel Wool finally gets around to making that Fred Bear's Family Diner game they want to make so badly. I've always would love to do is get kind of back to... I have no clue if we'll ever be able to do this. But getting back to kind of like the origin of like Nazgur Entertainment or the mm. origin of of uh, Freddy Fazbear. But in the meantime, while we wait for that inevitably cryptic that just game, hope that this start to the timeline helps to fill in some of those gaps. I'm excited to share part two with you next week. If you haven't subscribed and rang the bell, make sure you do it now oh, so you're notified. I don't like this Chica at all. Why? Look at the eyes! <laughs> Gaping sockets. So there we go. That is part one. The ultimate FNAF. No, I was trying to think oh. what the part was called. The Foundations of Freddy. Yes. That is part one. The Foundations of Freddy uh, from Matt Pat's Game Theory Ultimate Timeline. Done. I now know slightly more what's going on. on, 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 on. But this was a lot of like pre-admin, wasn't it? Like the next one, which is Afton era, that's a lot more game-centric. Yeah. What actually? Yeah. What went down? Went down. How many kids died? Which Who one? died when? In what animatronic? Yeah. Thank you for watching. Uh, if you uh, if you haven't subscribed already, and you're here just from this series. Then we have got a lot. This is this is very much scraping the surface of the FNAF content on this channel. We're playing the games. We're watching this, we're going to watch the musical, the parodies, the songs, the song parodies, the parody songs, the parody musicals, go the musical through, parodies, everything, book. ever, and hopefully all of the games. If not, we'll scrape the surface of every game at least. <laughs> um, thank you for watching. Bye. See you next time on Parker's FNAF School. I'm being the rabbit. Here, don't be. Oh.